Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Film House. We are, if you're watching this, we're back in the, the dungeon because we're doing uh, some other stuff. I'm joined by Bruce and James. How you guys doing? Hi. Hey. Well, thank you for having and us. And that's it. Those are the only people who John's joined. Hey. John just arrived. And special guest, John Smith. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Just got my swole on. Is that how we say it, James? I'm glad yes, you that's did. that's how we say it. Because <laughs> today we're talking about some pretty super things and all those super things are brought to you by Hims. They are sponsoring this episode of Film House. We got a good deal of them. You get a whole month of their stuff for five bucks. More info on that later in the show. But first, we got a couple things we can talk about. We can do some movie news, or we could talk about a movie that came out a month ago. What would you guys rather do? Topical or not topical? I mean, what do you? Well, what kind of movie news are we talking? Well, here. Uh, here so big news. So yeah, big we news. definitely should start the show off with some very thrilling. Movie news. Well, John put <laughs> slash. Why are you talking news? like that? John put. I'm three. trying to do my news voice. <laughs> John did three headlines here. Are oh, you want to just read them then? Since sure. The, just read the headlines. I read that's the all articles as well. Just read the headlines. Nice. That's hey, all we need. Did you hear that Woody Harrelson is reportedly playing Carnage in the new Venom film? That's okay. your news voice. That's what, so. Right, wait. Got it. So no, it's the, my like. Hey, what's up? Okay. So Woody Harrelson. <laughs> haven't they already finished shooting it? They finished shooting it. Ah uh, yes, but they're adding him back in. What do you mean? Adding back in. What do you mean? They're they're doing CG. I don't to think the problem, add Woody Harrelson. In. I don't think the problem is with the news story. I think the problem is with you. Hold on. So the so the movie that's already been shot. <laughs> there he just, is. That's they, it. That's just footage from the movie. They now <laughs> just recently decided to add <laughs> Carnage to it and get Woody Harrelson, or is it that the character was already in it, but a mostly CG character? And now Woody Harrelson's coming in to dub the voice. I'm guessing they're dubbing the voice. Oh, okay. okay. All right. There we go. Is there something about? Woody Harrelson's voice that just screams carnage? No. Yeah, it's like southern drawl with kind That's of not, a lift. Is that the way carnage sounded? Yeah, uh, yeah, Cassidy. Carnage His name was sounded Cassidy. like right. a death. <laughs> uh, read, the, read the next headline. All right, next headline. You may have seen this if you follow Twitter. Uh, Simon <laughs> Pegg claims that J.J. Abrams had a different plan for Ray's parentage, which I thought was interesting because of how many cooks are in that kitchen. There's no cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, the problem. that's the problem. Yeah. Well, Mostly no, there's a, yeah, J.J. Abrams had a plan. Yeah. Which he hinted towards in the first and seven. That which is like, why everyone found it so jarring mm -hmm. when, when it was Johnson immediately like, no, nope, never yeah. mind. Which yeah. is okay, but that's why it's jarring. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the four of us could come up right now with four different and satisfying answers that would be different than The Last Jedi? I mean, I don't know about satisfying. I was actually relatively satisfied with that answer in Last okay. Jedi. I thought it was kind of so cool. That's the one that satisfies you. Yeah, okay. I it was fun. What would you have done, James? Uh, I mean, I would have made it have a, maybe a little bit more impact. I don't know what that necessarily means. But when you have a major plot thrust of the film that precedes it with that, and then to say, but actually, no, it's just bad improv. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but I feel like in the first one, it was... The whole reason she was holding on uh, and not committing to the rebellion was because she thought she had like important parents that she had to go meet and that they were coming back to save her. Less who those parents were. Well, was she not committing to the rebellion? Yeah, that was the thing that I, I think in the audio commentary they said they had to remind the audience a few times that she was like, I can't commit to this because I have to get back to Jakku or... Wherever. Is it Jakku? Jakku, yeah. Yeah. No. Or Wait. whatever. Oh. Yeah. In Force Awakens, she did that a few times where she's like, when they go to Maz Kanata's planet. She's mm -hmm. like, no, she's I don't like, want to. Yeah. She's like, this is a beautiful place in Alhan, but I'd rather go to my shithole where I eat. Because uh, my, par yeah. my parents are coming See, back. Yeah. Yeah. JJ Abrams' audio commentary. That's He said that's why she kept wanting to get back to Jakku. Gotcha. But, the vi but also the vibe I got was that Han was like, Han was like, do you want to be my new daughter? And she said, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been totally looking for a dad. So I mean, oh, yeah. she still felt like she had some sort of thrust. Well, I, I get that perspective. I, don't, right? I, I can definitely see James' perspective because I think from an audience perspective, when you're watching it, you're like, "Well, she's obviously the hero." Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Mm. Well, the big thing that the big thing that I think screws up that whole part was when she grabs the lightsaber and then has a flash. They just kept introducing things that yeah. if they don't mean anything, if it's something that everyone's capable of or just happens to kind of anyone, yeah. then it feels like it isn't as significant. So like, 
when they show an image of what appears to be a child's low angle perspective of a ship flying away, you're like, what's the significance of that? That's just kind of how most minds work. And when then you go, oh, nothing. That's just like literally the ship that they were in flying away. Mm, then you're yeah. like, oh, well then why'd you show me? Yeah. It yeah. didn't matter. I'm looking really. forward to JJ Abrams actually. I think he's going to wrap that up nicely. Yeah. The, in well, episode that, nine. I think he's going to fix it mm-hmm. for that's lack been, of a better term. That's been some of the speculation that yeah. he's going to not retcon it, but I mean, I could easily see them saying that that was, uh, old Adam driver, you know, manipulating her oh, and not being yeah. honest. I, I just think, but the problem is then that's another bad set yeah, of improv. Another twist. You know, yeah. like I think I'm okay if we just want to go Ryan Johnson's thing, but then let him go, this is what this is what I had in mind, yeah. and then do that in the next oh, one. Oh, it's split it into two movies. Yeah. With and Ryan do two Johnson. episode nine. <laughs> yeah. I like fine it. With that. Okay. Uh, okay, so this one, I think you guys probably are going to be most excited about this one. Westworld season two will be exploring Shogun World. East World? They, they teased that in the last episode of Westworld mm-hmm. Season 1. I think yeah. it's just confirmed. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they've confirmed, uh, I think, with some marketing stuff. Uh, talking about, huh, I didn't watch this. Yeah, I haven't okay. watched is any They're trailers. playing just, the just Season look, 2 I've been trailer. I'm also not watching the trailer. I'm refusing to watch the Season 2 trailer. Oh, Nobody oh, looks at the out a little bit. I don't really want to know. Um, but yeah, so they've, in one, some though. marketing, they've released something saying, like, for the if you want to indulge in the violent pleasure of slicing people in half with a katana, visit Shogun World. Hmm. Uh, That's cool. Should the show good. still be called Westworld then? Of course it should. I know for marketing reasons, it's yeah, good. Of yeah. course it should. Wasn't the movie called Westworld? But they went to three different. They went to What's like medieval. Future World, World is another one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Future World's the sequel. There was also a television. <laughs> a I know. I'm just saying there's so a sequel. There's a sequel to Westworld, <laughs> but they call it Future World. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Remember all the cock and boobs you got to see in that movie? Every episode. I mean, show? Every episode we saw cock and boobs. <laughs> Every single. <laughs> Man, Just call the show Cock Dandy and Tandy. What, what was her name? Tandy Newton. Tandy, Tandy Newton. Newton. She's looking Newton. great. She's what like 47 dandy. years old or something. She looks yeah. great. Her. You see like her butt from behind you. Evan, like, Evan Rachel Wood? You bet you do. <laughs> You've got lesbians. You've got gay guys. You've got cock. You've got tits. Hey, remember that one guy who had a huge dick? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pissed if they could build me any way they wanted and they gave me not a big dick. <laughs> Uh, you guys are excited for Westworld, though. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. I loved that show. When does that premiere? It's soon. I want to yeah, say it's I like it's I think at it's the end of this month. Yeah, I think it's in April. In April. Oh I, shit! I thought yeah. the show dragged on a little bit, and this is actually this is my fault. Uh, it, this is one of those shows that has been ruined by fan bases. Oh. Where, but it, once again, my fault. Okay. I every week I would go, or after every episode. I do yep. the digital water cooler thing, and yeah. I'd go on like the Westworld subreddit, and people oh. go calling it. He's the man in black. Oh, and I'm yeah. like. Shit. Yeah, I kind of wish I figured that. that out on my own. Or I try not to do that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I need to stop doing that. Yeah. Um, I was watching the trailer. Sorry. This is season one. Season one. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I thought season one could have maybe been two episodes shorter, and they could have probably tightened everything up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's just, I, I, I think it was, it was spread out a little bit. Hopefully the next season, this is just my personal hope, is that it's, it's, it's a little more, uh, more condensed. Here's why I like Westworld so much. Because I like Western stuff. Except that in the mid 2000s, well, I guess since since uh, what is it? What's the famous HBO one? Sopranos. No, Torchwood. Deadwood. Oh, Deadwood. Deadwood. Torchwood. Yeah. Deadwood. Um, ever since Deadwood, the assumption has been that you have to make a western that looks like shit, and everyone looks uncomfortable, hmm. and everyone's covered hmm. in mud and shit. So mm-hmm. like, there's hell on wheels and stuff. I can't watch it because I, I just imagine all the actors on set sweltering you under can the smell heat. Smell it. <laughs> But Westworld is like this weird pristine version of the West because mm-hmm. it's that's it's how it's made designed. Up. Yeah. yeah. And so it allowed me to enjoy the Westworld more. So thank every, you. Everybody's clean. Anthony Hopkins for smell, building that would, for me. Smell everybody's deodorant. Would you consider the Revenant as a Western? Even though it takes place like in the north? Uh, same time period. Yes. Right? It's yeah. in the west side. Mm-hmm. Man, this show's so fucking good. I forgot all same. about this. Really? Yeah. I forgot about like when they were like manipulating their expressions to make them look like robots and yeah. shit. Oh, it's so cool. Anyway, Man. all right. I can't wait. You heard it here first, She's everyone. All naked. We're excited Huge for dongs. Westworld. <laughs> she uh, got a dong. So the reason why you're all here. That was the worst subplot. 
What? Those guys. Yeah, those These guys died. This guy yeah, was yeah. terrible. Uh, oh, he was one of those. It happens. Extra. Whatever. Well, he was fine. showing her power of manipulation. Yeah. The other guy. The the not the Asian the, guy. The, the yeah the, the white other, guy. The white yeah. guy. Oh yeah, being was like, terrible. We can't trust like, her. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I won't. I haven't had sex with the since. Yeah. Ugh. Yes. <laughs> you know they did. That, that was a funny, weird thing about Westworld, where like the employees would do weird stuff and be like, "I have it on camera." They're like, what? Yeah, I like, know. Like, how, why are they surprised? In, in the future world where we've built robots that can do anything? Thousands of cameras. Where's the kid? Ca this giant CCTV face <laughs> on. Like, yeah, you're right. Come you're on. being filmed. You are, be <laughs> you are being filmed. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh, <laughs> let me finish inside the robot and hose her out. Okay. So the reason why you're all here, we're going to talk about a little film. Those are your headlines, by the way. We're going to talk about Black Panther. I've never heard of it. Yes, you've never heard of that film. Don't. No. Come on. Yes, no. and. That's what we do Never here. heard of it. I hadn't I heard of it. Either. Okay. I didn't know yes, Tell us about it. I haven't it. heard of it. It's See, a James small heard... indie film from a company called Disney. Never heard of them. And Marvel Studios. I believe that is a <laughs> French company. They came together to tell a small story about a young prince named T'Challa mm. who must fight his uncle Scar, who killed Mufasa. <laughs> nope. What? <laughs> you could mix those two stories so, sorry, up. Sorry, Kimba. Nope. The story of no, a young no, lion no. in Japan. No. no. What? He's, no, that's partly true. No, Adam. No, you got it all wrong. We it's the story of T'Challa who has to ascend to be the king of the Wakanda nation, but instead is challenged by other men. A, a sort of <laughs> cat king, if you will, Bruce. A Black Panther. Oh, is meow his, is his name. <laughs> I say the lion, lion king. That's cat. <laughs> so y'all right. are big fans of Marvel in general, right? I, Marvel I, franchises, I Marvel films. I know that two out of the four of us play Marvel Puddles of Quest every day. P Puddles of Quest? And have collectively spent <laughs> over five grand on a Are you kidding? Oh my no. gosh. I'm that very it's sad even, for all of you. It's not even half that, maybe. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I Come think at on. this point, I think I've ascended beyond everybody in the office. I think I'm the most excited about any Marvel film coming out. That makes you ascend? Jacuzzi! At this point, I think. <laughs> I don't know that for sure, other than maybe Adam. Adam seems to be also very excited. I, I, I flip-flop. I okay. go from burnt out to... I'm never burnt out. I want more. I don't know what it is. I like Recently, like Doctor Strange and Black Panther. I saw Black Panther twice in theaters. Doctor Strange I've watched three times now. I just, I love those films and I really, I, I'm also a sucker for superheroes. There's, so. there's so much in the genre of superhero now that I can just tuck myself into my favorite subgenre oh, of yeah. the genre. Yeah. yeah. Then, so it's like certain movies are coming out for Marvel and I'm like, I can't wait for Infinity War. I can't wait for this. And then other ones are just grouped into like, the, I will be seeing this. Right, right. But I don't, I don't really care all that much. Um, not, not excited for Ant-Man and Wasp. Eh. Yeah, I'm actually, that's the only other one because Ant-Man was sort of meh. I'm sort of like this on Ant-Man and Wasp. I'm going to yeah. see it. I'm going to see it. I'll see right. it. I'm excited. I'm, uh, in the trailer, at least, I saw it last night when I went and saw Black Panther mm -hmm. for the first time. <laughs> yeah. They were doing some cool... I'm excited for the stunts and action sequences yeah. because there's a lot of stuff they do with scaling things down or scaling them up. That's very cool. And that should be exciting to see, you know, kind of everything they play around with that concept. My only concern is that they have... The trailer, at least, for Ant-Man and Wasp does not show me anything more creative or interesting than the being in the train, the train set scene from Ant-Man 1. Right, right, right. Which that and then fighting the briefcase were the only two like standout moments for me in mm -hmm. all of Ant-Man. Yeah. And so like him shrieking down a building and then it turns out it's a suitcase with wheels is dumb to me and not <laughs> cool. And then them throwing a giant what Hello Kitty Pez dispenser yeah, or something yeah. is like that to me that's nothing. Like to me, that's fodder. It's not a creative way to use his power. It's thought, just they, they're gonna get a laugh because it's something that shouldn't be big, but it is. I thought Civil War did a better job of showing what Ant-Man could do oh, yeah. than Ant-Man yeah. did, which is sad. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, at least, but that sort of makes sense though, in the context of the films that Ant-Man is when he first gets the suit. You're right, you're absolutely right. And then Civil War, he yeah. goes, let's try to hit the other button. Right. Why went big? No, you're totally right. Ant-Man uh, Wasp, though, should be the most creative. Now that we know what Ant-Man can do all the way around, mm -hmm. there should be something new that we they reveal about Wasp or Ant-Man or both that they can do together. Um, that is something that the audience hadn't thought of. I can tell you something they can do. Uh, you, uh, one gets big, one gets small. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> I'm not going to say which one, but about that. I'm just saying you could get some micro stimulation. It's also interesting because it's like, you gave her wings and I'm like, 
Dude, you fly everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you literally get shot on an arrow and fly. You just throw, jump and you're flying. Also, he like rode on ants or something, and they were flying. <laughs> yeah. so like, he was spent the whole time flying. And he was like, he, you, she could fly. Um, uh, anyways, Black Panther. Uh, sorry, but, sorry. Oh, actually, before yeah. we get there, so uh, give this quick little preface. I didn't want to do the Black Panther review when it was hot business because I felt like there was. There wasn't enough time for anyone to make an actual sort of... To think about it? Yeah, the, yeah. It, it, it felt like there was too much in the news and there was too much... Uh, there's too much of an emphasis of putting it onto like cultural events and not really looking at it like a movie. Mm -hmm. People kept trying to make it into something, that's want, what, something that it wasn't. And I'm, I'm a, more of a fan of just watching a movie for what it is, a piece of entertainment, not trying to push a political agenda or anything like that. And that's, sure. obviously, that's not something we do here. I just wanted to talk about it. Does it work as a film? Does it work within the context of the world that they've been trying to build. I would say, though, it's hard to separate those things. I agree. There's significance agree. to the film. The, and to this film not, specifically. Whether or yeah. not it's intended as entertainment mm -hmm. or not, there's significance to the, its existence and its success. Of course. So I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that stuff's going to go away. I'm just saying now that it's died down right. a little bit, that I think people have a moment to breathe because this also feels like a thing that happens and you will see it with Infinity War. It's going to come out and people are going to go, my God, best movie I've ever seen oh, because right. we live very much in this hype. It's reactionary. It's a reactionary hype based world yeah. that we now live in. Huh, you love that joke. And it's our <laughs> meme or trope or whatever I do. But regardless, I mean, that that is that is the sort of reactions we have now, people. It's either I love it or I hate it. Yeah. And what I like about Black Panther is I feel like a lot of us had different opinions that it's, maybe it's not a 10 or a one. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. And hopefully on this podcast, we can come to some sort of resolution between all of us of how we feel about the movie. Unfortunately for me, I thought it was a 10. Um, I thought it was an 11. <laughs> really? You liked it? Oh, I, Wait, I, you no, sorry. Like you you go first. You uh, go first. Well, I was just going to say, I, I actually really enjoyed this film. And the way I know it's a good movie for me is when I leave the, th the theater and the next day, I'm either thinking about it or I want to go see it again. Um, that's Those are my habits. They're not for everybody. But but it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, I have a need to see this movie again. It's usually because I want to see an action scene or I want to see something that I didn't see before, mm -hmm. or I'm thinking more about the themes of the movie. And like James said, with this movie, there's a social conscience that I don't think any other Marvel film has had yet. Now I can't think of one that's had something that has to say about uh, popular culture just generally, um, or even society in general that, that, this movie does that no other Marvel movie does. Um, and I thought it was really well done. I thought Ryan Coogler did a fantastic job integrating the two into a Marvel movie, but also having a social conscience, which was really cool. If they had a encore showing, say you could go to the movie theater and buy a ticket and they say, if they offered this to Bruce, would you take it? Yeah. Would they say, here's a movie, here's a ticket for tomorrow, but it's only 20 minutes long. It's just the scenes you're coming back for. Would you pay for that? No, I would okay. watch the whole movie. Okay. Um, you're, right. That's a good question, Adam. Uh, I, it was another, again, cause I weigh those in my head. I think to myself, ah, did I only like that one thing? Uh, you know what? I'll, I never mind. I'll just wait for it to come out on, you know, Blu-ray, whatever the fuck. And I'll watch, just watch the streaming and be like, cool, whatever. Uh, most Marvel movies are like that. This one was not, I wanted to watch it. I wanted to watch the entire thing again. When I watched it a second time, I enjoyed it more because I was like, oh, yeah, there's that scene. Oh, yeah, there's that scene. And so I, I was reminded of how cool the movie was. Right. That's just for me. I'm, I think I'm the most positive, though, about it here. So, Okay. Uh, John, you went and saw it last night. I went and saw it last night. You hate Marvel movies. Well, I don't hate Marvel movies. <laughs> as you don't like them. I, as I said previously, I think the more stuff that's done in camera, the more connected to the film I feel and the more I enjoy it. And I feel like Marvel and most superhero movies do a lot of CG, a lot of blue screen, everything like that. So it's harder for me to, and especially since not having grown up reading these comics and everything. I didn't either. They, well, yeah, uh, they don't, I, I feel like a lot of times movies don't do a good job of getting you to connect the characters from the beginning. They're kind of made with this kind of, you've seen all the movies before this and you know that there's 20 movies to come. So be interested, uh, which never really resonated with me. Um, uh, but I gotta say this movie didn't follow the standard superhero formula. Uh, and it, it was actually, I felt like a whole, a whole chunk of it felt like a bond movie. Cause, uh, the first of all, there was the Q part where his little sister's like showing him all the tech and then they go to a casino where they're being undercover and then their like, cover is like blown. Skyfalls, a lot like yeah. Skyfall, yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed it and I felt like up until the like civil war battle right at the end, 
um, I was in it 100%, but then like a CG rhino appeared. Yeah, that's and, like, really, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just like, okay, like I, but I understood that it was a personal problem. I'm not like, this is stupid. Mm. I was just, I, okay, I am now unable to connect with this movie because there's a whole mess of CG covering the screen. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to wait until like I see a, a real human again. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really fun and it wasn't as linear I think as most uh, superhero movies seem to be like linear with a bunch of filler. Uh, that seems to be kind of the model for a lot of these Marvel movies, in my opinion. Um, and I felt like every all the scenes and everything that happened was much more connected than normal. And um, it wasn't just like a lot of plot fodder. Mm -hmm. um, Were there any like moments in the movie where you... You got that little that moment of euphoria where you went, oh, I was surprised. Like I didn't know. I don't want to call everything a twist, but you know the a plot reveal mm -hmm. revealed itself. Uh, Did you feel the serotonin release from your brain? Into I your I fluid? really enjoyed that they um, that the women used, <laughs> and this is something I've come back to a lot that I grew up on Jackie Chan. They use their wigs and their heels uh, in the battle sequences, um, <laughs> which seemed very practical and very real to me. Um, that was something that I was like, oh, hell yeah, that totally would, like, you totally using everything you can in a fight. Um, that was something, I remember she took off her wig and threw it. And that, that was kind of a funny moment that was supposed to garner a laugh, but I was like, she would do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we'll get to uh, James's, James's thoughts. Uh, because I believe, I think James liked it. I forget though, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out. First, I want to remind you <laughs> that this podcast is sponsored by Hims. Uh, I want to let you guys know that we have a problem. It's a villain problem. <gasps> and we call him Captain ED. What's that stand for? Uh, erectile dysfunction. Oh, but that's boy. why we call oh, him ED. Oh, so, so we can sell comics on it. <laughs> over 25% of men under the age of 40 are diagnosed with ED. 40% of men over 40 struggle with erectile maintenance, maintain. That's a word I created. Please do not go to weird solutions like the old pal T'Challa did. Remember in the movie? No. What did he, he do? He went through a bunch of. I didn't like the way that he had to rely on the plant. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Don't do that. He should have checked out forhims.com. The heart shaped plant. It was a heart shaped. Anyway, yeah. uh, they are a self proclaimed one stop shop for all hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for. Can you guys guess? Us. Him, men, men yeah. you are him, you are the pronoun, Bruce. I said, I said that, I answered that in my head, so I was right. That's good. Thanks, John. <laughs> Science is a superhero, and with its help, we can make the villainous ED be an optional one. It's an optional part of your life. Uh, with the help of real doctors, not those fake Hollywood types, not the Ganja bros, not Dr. Ganja. He's not going to help you. <laughs> he uh, might help you with other things. Not not, uh, who's a Dr. Octopus? He's not going to help you with your problems. No. So anyway, no BS, just what you need to get you back on your three feet. Uh, avoid the waiting room, avoid the awkward doctor visit. You save time in your life and do the things that you'd rather be doing with a well-groomed and maintained erection. This is, this is my writing, by the way. This I is, imagine. This yeah. is my personal take on the ad read. I'm a good writer. <laughs> so what you do, that power is up to you because with great erections come great responsibilities. Uh, I use the plural because uh, I feel like Uncle Ben was short-sighted. He said great responsibility, singular. <laughs> With this rocking hard on, you're going to have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> if you just answer a few questions and chat with a doctor online for your own confidential review, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to do too much. It's all online. That's what I love about it. So please try hymns for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started for just 5 bucks while supplies last. See the website for full details. This would cost hundreds of if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy, keep that in mind, please. So go to forhims.com slash filmhouse ED. Together, you and I will conquer the villainous Captain ED. Together? Yeah, we can do it together. <laughs> okay. I can help like, any of you guys with your erectile dysfunction if you want, just ask. Hey, Kevin Feige, you need help writing uh, the fifth uh, Avengers film? I'm right here. He doesn't write them. <laughs> What does he do? <laughs> he produces. Yeah, he's a PGA. Uh, I'm sure he wrote something, like a really good line, like, mm -hmm. you know what happens to a toad when it rains or whatever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good line. We're back with Black Panther and the official film house review. So, James, it's been a while. You mm -hmm. saw it when it first came out, and that was it, right? Yes. All right. 
uh, having some time to think about it. How do you feel? I think this is definitely uh, an A tier Marvel movie. Um, now there is an S tier, which as we all know exists above A tier. Guardians of the Galaxy? Which to me is Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Civil War, mm. and uh, and Winter Soldier. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, these are movies that I think like really transcend what Marvel movies set out to be. There are other movies like Black Panther, which I think are perfected forms of the Marvel formula. And so I think this is like a the, an example of a good version, the best possible version of the Marvel formula. Uh, I appreciated how it didn't it didn't feel like it needed to tell the origin story, but still told the origin story. That didn't be right. The only problems I had were like resolving some of the timeline issues, and I'm sure people have answers for them, but like if you're following all the movies, like there's certain things that they state explicitly that you could explain with not lines like you could just reason things like his dad is black when you assume the mantle of black panther so then why was he black panther for all of civil war oh like see, to me that I, well i mean i don't know if you want answers to this no but i'm saying people okay. give me answers but they're not in the movie explicit. I see, I see like the movie yeah, makes it. an explicit got point it, yeah, of yeah. saying these are the rules of black right. panther yeah. you can go in after the fact and go well i would reason that yeah. this is the case i just seems strange when you have control over everything that you would that right. you would still introduce these complications. Hmm. Um, I think this this movie has the best production design. Whew, Thor Ragnarok's real good though. Hmm. But they're both really good. Some of the yeah. best fucking production yeah. design and also I think the cast that surrounds the lead is yeah. maybe, maybe the strongest. I would agree. Out of any Marvel movie. Hmm. But to that point, I felt like one of the letdowns for me was I, did, I thought that T'Challa was less interesting. He's like the than, straight man. Than everyone <laughs> yeah, around yeah, him. He's the like, straight man. Uh, there's point like even when you put him up against uh, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, Michael B. Jordan's amazing. And I was film. like, I was like, ah, I wish Michael B. Jordan was playing Black Panther. <laughs> he's, he's got so much charisma, yeah, he's so you know. Good. And it made for a great villain. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but uh, there were so there were certain things. It, the same thing happened when I watched Doctor Strange, where I was like, I like that movie, but man, the computer effects artists seemed like they were working overtime, and then the writers were like, eh, we got to finish the script by Tuesday, you know? <laughs> um, and so it's unfortunate when you get to the end of a movie like that and then the bottom of the credits is this paragraph of special effects artists yeah. who honestly made that movie as memorable as it is. Um, this doesn't have issues nearly like that at all. Um, like John, though, there were certain points where once it really broke out into being a CG... Like a Marvel movie? CG fuck fest, yeah. I thought that some of the action choreography with as good as it is at the beginning of the movie, started falling apart towards the end. Uh, I personally hate when they just uh, palette swap the hero to make a villain. Yeah. So here's it, gold versus purple. Yeah. It's literally they, the same no. thing. And if you know how computers work, they could theoretically like go like control you saturation slider, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like they do something like that. And then I also think some of the CG looked really shit it when did. they were fighting at the end. Yeah. There, like rubber there people. were a few set extensions where it was like, holy shit, this is the final version. Mm. Like when it, when it's during his first uh, trial, uh, or challenge, mm -hmm. and it was the wide shot looking up at all the people like dancing. It was yeah, so was... clearly oh, yeah, yeah. like a set extension. Yeah. And then at the end, um, spoiler, uh, <laughs> when uh, Michael B. Jordan had been stabbed and he took him out to see the sunset, it went to a super wide where there were like little mm -hmm. people on the screen, and it was like, that doesn't look good. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt bad because it's so much of it looked great, but then there were ones where it was like, okay, that. Like it, it was weird. It was almost as though like someone was like like wrap it up. We, there you go, right here. Well, yeah, I, it I looks like it looks was, like the crowd another, in the back yeah. of Mortal Kombat, the video game, when they're like yeah. cheering. You know? No, I think they were though. I think they were like, all right, we got to hurry it up because we only have what was hundred. Yeah, I think so. Or yeah, hundred million or whatever the Which budget was. Which is a shame I mean, given how much money it's made. I, hindsight is twenty twenty, but man, yeah. it would have been nice if they were like take it. We know this is gonna make a billion dollars. Well, it, I, time you I, I think the um, they. This could have been potentially a gamble as well from yeah. the studio side. But my my whole thought was Marvel movies are now getting the benefit of being able to, I, I don't think anyone wants to do the origin story. I think they're now able to sidetrack it because they can just integrate it into a much larger movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So it is kind of nice to have a really cool movie like Civil War, get introduced to this character and then start to actually ask for the origin story as opposed to like something like Amazing Spider-Man 
where it's been what four years or whatever and now we're gonna retell the same story like we don't need that anymore and at least I feel like the studios are are somewhat getting that I, you know what the, oh, I'm sorry you know what the MCU is like it's like Funhouse because that's what we do oh yeah we, we kind of okay, will occasionally integrate new people into our yeah, content you're right and then they start asking for people like John nobody asked for John oh I mean he's like but the Hulk am he's I never carnage gonna, he's never you know you're Hulk oh. you're never gonna get your own standalone <laughs> damn it again. that's due to licensing reasons though it's not <laughs> you so I am owned by Fox so. uh, I was gonna say though there were some things that kind of bugged me I don't think they're problems with the movie really but like they bugged me about how I should feel about Wakanda and its leader because Wakanda is held up as this like amazing thing. But as soon as some psychopath took control, 75% of the people were like, Fuck okay, it. yeah, Fuck it. let's blow up the rest of the world. Like they immediately went along with it, which we know in this day and age isn't mm. too far out of the realm of possibility, it's yeah. but it's unfortunate when you think about like the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, that was, that was kind of a, a, a hard pill for me to swallow with Killmonger was how extreme he went when I was kind of hoping for more of a morally gray character. Yeah. He was so quick to just kill everyone. Well, I mean, but that was, that was, well, that was his name, first of all. But second of all, he was, he'd been doing it his entire life to get there. Sure. So but, for me, like, it was just this culmination of the fact that he had been so angry his I entire just, life. I just what? think that his, his strength, other than his gigantic muscles, <laughs> was that he was super charismatic. Oh, yeah. And no, to very, me, it seemed yeah. like that's how he got to that point. Mm -hmm. He didn't order people around to get to that point, he convinced Andy Serkis, like convinced Claw that like helping him would be of benefit. Yeah. And there was no point really where you saw him convince the Wakandans, like pull the wool over their eyes and show them that like mm. there's yeah. something else. And, and that may have been harder to pull off, but it would have been, I think that would have sealed the deal on his character if they had shown how his charisma is his strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas T'Challa is a very stoic leader yeah. He's he's the right leader. He's the leader that Wakanda should have. But because right. he does isn't so brash, he doesn't like put himself out there. He's very like the whole movie. He's got his arms behind his back. He's yeah. like a like a quiet sensei, right? But he's the right leader. Just he's not reaching as many people in the right ways because he isn't screaming it or like mm -hmm. shouting it or you know whatever. I so. I, I, I was hoping that the movie was going to reach a and I, I can't be mad at something for not doing what I wanted it to do, but this is only because I liked Michael B. Jordan's character. Mm -hmm. And I had hoped that, with the, they kind of do this in the movie, but I, I wanted everyone to realize they were all wrong and right at the same time. Mm. They said, there, there is no black or white. Let's figure out a way to meet in the middle where we go. Let's not shut ourselves off from the world, but maybe let's find a way of sharing our technology and then it kind of works out perfectly because the next movie coming out is about an alien invasion well, where they're going to oh, need that sort of mentality. I thought anyway. that's but they, that's what they did. That's the conclusion they kind reached. Kind of. Then. he, I, But that, that's sort of, I guess that's what kind of makes it kind of a weird issue is that he just flips to this extreme and goes, yep, we're going to share it with the world. Let's get it out there. Well, like, but he, I, he, I wish he, needed, it he needed the Michael B. Jordan character to motivate him. But I don't think it needed his death. I, okay. That's well. what I'm, oh, no, no. Hmm. I'm, I'm okay with his character having the motivation to do that to him. Yeah. I wish he would have said, I wish they would have reached something rather than, oh, you need to cancel out the villain. I wish it would have been he beats him arm to arm combat, but then he realizes, no, we should work together. And then like, I, I like when the villain becomes a good guy. <laughs> well, he, but when they did I, do that at the end of the movie, they get, he gave him the chance to survive. Yes. He yeah, told yeah. him, he said, right. uh, we can fix you. And he said, nah, we're good. Right. They, but so. what makes him a bad guy is that he, he would rather die than be with the good guys. You know what I mean? But yeah, to so me, that's the less dramatic version of Rorschach at the end of Watchmen. Where he's like, I'm gonna tell the world what happened here, sure. and they're like, Don't do it, because we're gonna have to kill you. And he's, but he has his own moral compass because yeah. he spent decades and decades reiterating this thing, and he knows it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I actually thought I, I, I didn't have a problem with that, and I liked that they included that scene at the end because I was like, He's just stabbed. Right, he's fine. Like, I feel like he's fine. Yeah. But then him saying like, No, we're basically good. saying explicitly to T'Challa, I cannot exist. Right. I will not be able to sleep at night. Right. No matter how much you view it to be morally right, you haven't seen what I've seen, and I will not be able to sleep. So just kill me. Well, no, he no. said he said he he's going to put him in prison. Yeah, he said he didn't want to be locked up the rest of his life. Yeah, well, I, I thought. I mean, whatever. But I thought it was like emotionally, like he's he would basically be restraining oh, the person that he, he would be emotionally locked well, up, his, probably physically too. I mean, but like, Kill, Killmonger's ideals were the fact that he wanted to take back the world yeah he well, wanted the, to take it back for his people the so. uh general lady mm -hmm. uh michonne mm -hmm. uh, which by the way in walking dead i haven't watched it since like season four or whatever mm. she was trash yeah in that show Ooh. i don't really Hot like trash. yeah she's not she's fantastic yeah, she's yeah. great in this she's movie. wonderful in this she's not 
No one is great in Walking That's Dead. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, she said something that I thought summed up his character was that your heart is so full of hatred that you're not fit to be king, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he'd been, I mean, I think Bruce is right. He'd been fighting his whole life. His entire sure, life. To get to that point. And it was his hatred and his like vengeance that mm-hmm. was driving him the whole time. I, I guess that's, I, and it's my fault for looking at this movie more than being a comic book movie because they're going to be comic book characters. Yeah. Which sometimes, yes, you get a Watchmen or you get something where a character can be have more motivation than just... Uh, zero or one mm-hmm. but in this one they had to say like he's a bad guy like I, I kind of wish he wasn't a murderous psychopath and that at the end he realizes you you are not fit to be king but you're gonna make a great general and he's like wow well, and then yeah. they hold yeah. hands and <laughs> they walk on they rule Wakanda but, but he'd in, also like, a burn cool down a sacred garden that had been around no, for exa- thousands of which, years so which, I mean like to like, me it made sense when they're like we're gonna have to lock you up no for sure and, and, and oh, yeah, he's yeah. like never mind I'll just die that yeah. made sense to yeah me. So. so is T'Challa the last strong Black Panther? I think that's the implication that there can be no more Black Panthers because they oh, burned man. the garden. But I would also say, um, because this is probably going to come into play in Infinity War, the comet that strikes the Earth at the, the vibranium. prologue or whatever, mm-hmm. not necessarily, I think it's an infinity gem. Me too. And I think it's changing the environment around it, which oh. is generating vibranium, which also is a reason why those plants... Because like vibranium, exist, yeah. why well, would vibranium you... cause plants to grow? But if it, there's an infinity gem that creates powerful material, yes. then then that plant would be there. So there's a potential that if the infinity gem still remains in the center of Wakanda, that plants would grow back. I'll, I'll take it a step further. It's also Please supposedly do. the soul gem mm-hmm. uh, that we're, we haven't seen yet. And they get to go to an afterlife place and hang oh. out with actual Black Panthers and talk to their dead uh, family members. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's soul true. stone would probably allow that makes you to a lot do of that. sense. Everything's yeah. purple too. Everything imbued with that power is and that's purple. the soul yeah, stone. They, right? They've Generally, switched the yeah. colors around from the yeah, comics, so have. I'm I'm just sort of waiting until it's all there. Yeah, like I a, don't know. A, it's, it's almost better. I kept thinking the purple gem was the one in Guardians. Am I wrong? It is. That was the power stone. I believe. Okay. Right. Right. It, it did have a purple aesthetic. It was purple, right? And they were like all glowing they, yeah, and, and stuff. And like, let's be a family. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I either. But I mean, it's weird. It's. Again, I watched it and I was like, fucking killer. This yeah. is killer. Yeah. Give me more of this. Yeah. Give me more of this. I loved it. Um, Cause they are, but there were some things along the way where I was like, I just, what? what? Like, <laughs> really? We're putting this all down to a fight next to a waterfall? Yeah. <laughs> like, he does lose and regain his powers twice in this movie. <laughs> know, that that's did when, true, yeah. when they were like, these are very protective plants. He's like, more. Like, yeah. I want the power. <laughs> I, Put it I, in me. Yeah, I need, I need to throw it up. <laughs> I feel like there could have been a version of this movie where the inciting incident was uh was Killmonger, Killmonger showing then, like, up gone backwards right like that as opposed to the inciting incident was right. like i have to go back but i'm not fully king yet yeah. they should have just been like you're king you're king you're good yeah who's this guy and then he comes in and then it causes stuff and then he disrupts like he's uh, like adam said welcomed in initially but then he disrupts it and then they go back and they show oh he was the mastermind of the claw and all these interactions yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then that's at the beginning of act three is when you realize, Oh no, he was behind all this. Oh, okay. And then, then they have to fight at the end as opposed to, cause the other result was he has to lose his power has to get his power. Now he's the King officially wait. He's not the King officially because <laughs> kind of at any point, Another someone challenge. can say, right. yeah, there's a challenge and then, Oh, he lost, mm-hmm. but not officially, you know, like there's yeah. a lot of politicizing of it. Yeah. Also, I know what Forrest Whitaker looked like in the nineties. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, I've seen Bloodsport. He is identical to the man he looks now. I was like, he's like, there was a past me. He's like, that's not you. Also, shout out, what's that actor's name? Uh, Which, the, the guy one? that played his, the guy that played Killmonger's, Killmonger's dad. dad. I always he, forget his name. He was in, um, he was, he's in Chris, he's Chris Darden in yeah, People vs. OJ. People vs. OJ. He's amazing. Kay Stevenson. He was I, something? I, he was I the love, best I, Michael Kay. I don't remember. Yeah. He's, he might be one of the best living actors <laughs> Because he fucking stole that scene, and he also hosted SNL, oh. and was better than ninety percent of the cast. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> really? Yeah. He huh. he stole the show uh, as I mean, like him and Marsha Clark, and yeah. People vs. OJ were amazing. Yeah, like, oh, yeah they were that, so good. But yeah. he was in this movie for five minutes, and I was like, this guy's this guy's incredible. Yeah. He's great. He's great. <laughs> Speaking of actors, I'd be remiss. Uh, uh, I knew this movie. You know, I knew it was starring a lot of uh, black, uh, strong black leads. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize how much emphasis they're going to put on uh, female leads. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, that was something I was really surprised by. And I was also thinking about it. 
apart from Black Widow, who's not even like a strong character because she, she's not a superhero. She's a badass. She, well, but she's kind of um, like character wise, she's basically an attachment or an accessory. Uh, yeah. Other. Didn't hasn't she had a love affair with like four different of the Avengers? Or Just something? Hulk. Just Hulk. Um, no. How dare you? But yeah, that was something I was really surprised by, and I really liked it. And I was mm-hmm. like, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, Lup- uh, Lupita Nyong'o. I don't. I don't know the her his little sister's name. I like the little sister. little sister. Was great. She's gonna be in Infinity War, uh, and I'm betting mm-hmm. they shot more scenes with her because yeah. people loved her. Not mm-hmm. crazy so. about the sneakers line though. Oh yeah, the one of those. Yeah, the, yeah. the See, meme. I'm, I'm not up on memes. It's fine. I, I didn't know it was a meme. That's the thing. I didn't I'm know it was a meme afterwards, and I think if we asked someone, they might. I think that if you asked the writer now, they'd say, "Yeah, the meme." <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> but it's not even executed the same way. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I, they try. Does he go? What are those? Yeah, yeah. yeah he goes up to his mom and he goes, "What are those?" Yeah. And she goes, "These are my sandals." Uh, <laughs> and then the camera falls to the ground yeah. and ends. <laughs> uh, is that a video? Um, I don't. I'm not up on this. Stuff. You know what would have been right. cool if Killmonger had made some sort of harrowing deal with the uh, the the ape. Oh, Mbaku? The ape clan, yeah, and then stolen their shit, and then he was an ape suited. Like oh, we saw the oh, other different really cool. tribes, as opposed to oh, two he'd be black silver panthers gorilla. Going out. Yeah. Also, he looked more like a jaguar. Was that intentional? Who Killmonger? Killmonger yeah. looked like he was jag, like black jaguar, as oh, opposed because, to black panther because of his yellow suit. And I was like, do they just keep all the cats down there? <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, they had they had two suits. Yeah, that was that was that was something I kind of liked. Because they had they had the garish one. Yeah, and they had the sil- and the one he had Black yes. Panther picked. Yeah, so. yeah. He know. was like, I want to be, you know, subtle. I'm just saying it looked undercover. like spotted at times, and I think they did that so it would stand out against the two suits. I think mm-hmm. sure. being I think right. identical from far right. away. But I was like, oh, if they should just pick a different cat. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was a little worried that Martin Freeman was going to be the let's get the reaction from the white guy mm-hmm. uh, to be like, whoa! But he actually served a point in the story as a pilot at mm-hmm. some point. Yeah. So I was like, well, oh, that was good. That's fine. Um, but then the other uh, Lord of the Rings character I want to point out, Andy Serkis is really good when he's not he's in CGI great. as well. Andy Serkis yeah. is great. Yeah. And I, once again, I he's guess, always been great. Spoilers. Uh, I, I hope you're watching this review after you've seen the movie uh, viewers and listeners, but um, basically the best actors in this movie all die, <laughs> huh. which means they can't really reuse them unless, but that's what Marvel always does. Yeah. That's a good point. Oh, I like, mean, but this is, I didn't. I don't remember Andy Serkis being that good in Age of Ultron. I remember it. I remember it distinctly because I was like, "Man, Andy Serkis is so charismatic." But he's barely. He's in barely it. in it. Yeah, yeah but this I, one he was in it more, and I felt like he was better because he felt more crazy. Well, he was. He was really crazy and evil in Age of Ultron. You just don't remember it. Like he. I, he's just. Yeah. He's just weird. He's. A, he's a <laughs> wild dude that's like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Yeah. Um, and he was in this movie too. What else has he been in as himself besides King Kong? Yeah, I was gonna say King Kong, the, the Prestige. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah right. Barely. I mean, that's the thing. It's he's one of those. I hate saying it this way. He's a, kind of a forgettable actor because you know him so well as like a character, CGI actor. character. Yeah, <laughs> but he's a good actor. If you get more roles, seen Tintin, Tin, he plays Captain Haddock, and it's stunning. Oh. There you go. Stunning. He, he also plays King Kong and a guy who gets eaten by a giant worm in King Kong. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if he played him again. In he also thing. plays Gollum, everybody. Don't forget. He's well, Gollum. We I'm know that. What? All right, I just want to make sure. Yeah. He like co-directed The Hobbit. And that's not a great movie, but he basically helped with half that movie. So, Do you think this Different. movie deserved a billion dollars? Deserve? Sure. Uh, I, I think from a business perspective, uh, Disney has dumped a lot of time and effort into uh, their universe creatively and uh, from a business perspective. Oh. So yeah, th- I think you shouldn't be, I, I'm, I was surprised that a, a movie that has like almost no history with, mm-hmm. in a, a, with a movie going audience could make a billion dollars. It reached mm-hmm. a, it, yeah. see, the thing is, is it reached a wider audience. It reached, it reached the audience that basically all of Marvel that everybody, you know, people have been watching Marvel movies now for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So it reached that entire audience mm-hmm. plus an entirely new audience. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why I, that's why I think this movie does deserve a billion dollars because it did both. Yeah. Uh, and it did it really well. CGI could have been a little bit better. CGI could have been maybe, better. Maybe reinvest, could have been better. They maybe didn't reinvest know that, half of that into the rhinos. They did, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you just get rid of the rhinos altogether. Yeah. yeah. That because, seemed weird. That seemed really weird that they were like, because I was like, oh, because rhinos are poached, they basically protect rhinos. Oh. And then when the rhinos show up, as death vehicles. Yeah. I was like, oh no, I guess they don't care about the rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright, they're fake. Why don't they just build more ships? <laughs> or I don't know, yeah, build build like a robotic rhino and yeah. a vibranium, right? Yeah. That, and then that way you you would forgive it for looking like a transformer. Because it's <laughs> that that character too, 
That was not a good character. Who? The, the guy, the rhino, the rhino shepherd. Oh, he the guy not, in from Get Out, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya. He could not wait to betray T'Challa. <laughs> I was really right. weird. They, yeah. they're, they needed something there to kind of hook that. Yeah. But Well, the, the, I guess the something was he was married to Okoye, the... He was married to the general. Yeah, but I know it was it's like my, it's very it barely mattered. I know. And then he was right. like, he was like, "You, I want you to come back because that guy killed my dad at some point." Yeah. And mm-hmm. then he's like, he's like, "We got him." And then some other guy came and took him away. And you know, we tried, we like, tried to get him. Like, he's like, Psh. he's like, final straw, man. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. That was the last time. I agree. Yeah. I How so dare too. you? Yeah. Well, I think that's gonna about do it. Unless you got any final thoughts, I think we're uh, at the end here. I'm gonna buy the soundtrack. Oh, it's yeah, a great, great soundtrack. soundtrack. Yeah, Kendrick yeah. Lamar soundtrack. did it. Yeah, it's really, really He makes good. Uh, music. <laughs> wow. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Good you're review. Welcome. You're you're my new movie details. I'm going to you for all my needs. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Bruce, James, John, for being mm-hmm. on the show. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for watching, listening, however you choose to consume this media. Perhaps you have a uh, you have someone doing uh, translating it via sign language for you. They don't. To which uh, I say to the, uh, the sign artist, thank you for doing all that work. Is the sign artist? I'm not really sure. And thank you, Hymns, for uh, sponsoring this podcast. Please check them out once again. That's for hymns.com slash filmhouse ED, as in Edward and uh, Drogo. Those are cool names. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week with hopefully an interview with Neil Blomkamp. We're mm-hmm. hoping to talk to him again about his upcoming Kickstarter. So we'll be uh, going into details about that. If you have any questions, hit us up. Uh, that you would like us to pass on to uh, Mr. Blomkamp. That would be fun. So we'll see you guys next time. Keep it sassy. Nice. That's my sign-off now. Keep okay. it sassy? You say that? Yeah, that's, that's what good. I say. I'm, we're hoping to get shirts done. Mm, we're not. <laughs> Gross. I got one for the sign language people. I gave birth to a sea turtle. That's really fun to say in sign language. So. Right. Okay, I, I have a question, guys. Yeah, go for it. What, what, what got solved at the end of this movie like did anything get made better like uh, the world is still a pile of shit right you i was saying the debt collectors had their source of income taken away from them that was the, the literally the only thing i could think of of like what good came out of this except